no fun intro video because I'm gonna try to keep this one short so that I can just link to this video every time that I bring up MIDI signals in another video so that I don't need to dedicate a quarter of my video every time to explaining how MIDI works. Specifically within the realm of guitars, you run into two different kinds of signals. You run into audio signals and MIDI signals. So all sound is basically waves. My voice is going into the microphone in my camera, it's vibrating that, turning it into an electrical signal, which is going over the internet to your speakers, it tells your speakers to make that electrical signal, and then you're hearing my voice. Isn't that cool? Science is cool. When you have a guitar that is a synth, you are taking some form of sound vibration, sending it down a cable, and it is vibrating your amp so that you can hear it. Yeah, anybody who's got an iPod that's completely filled with music knows that audio files are kind of big. MIDI files, on the other hand, are almost a text file. It's if we have all the notes on this assigned to a number, the MIDI file would say at this point in time the note turns on, and then at this point in time the note turns off. And because it's just on and off signals, MIDI signals are really small. But in order for those MIDI signals to turn into audio you can hear, they have to be interpreted through a MIDI device. So if I have a blind roommate who's chilling on my front porch smoking cigars with my mom, and he went and did grocery shopping today and I want to say thank you, I could pick up my phone and call him and say, Hey Riley, thank you for going grocery shopping today. That would be an audio sound. That's my voice making waves in the phone. The phone is going to Riley making waves in his ear and he can interpret that. I could also send a text message to my mom that says, tell Riley thank you for going grocery shopping. That text message would be a MIDI signal. And then my mom, who is now the MIDI instrument, can read that and say, Riley, thank you for going grocery shopping. I can say it without using my voice. I don't need to use my voice to send that message. The other advantage is that if we don't like how my mom sounds, we can send that text message to somebody else who can make the exact same message sound different. And if I wanted to adjust it, it would be easier to send a revised text message than it would be to go back in time through what I said and change the waveform. So MIDI files are a lot smaller, they are easier to edit because it's just digital information, it's just on and off. It's turn on pitch bend to level 25, turn pitch bend on to level 24, all the way down to level 1. You can change those really easily. You can write out the MIDI file, look at the MIDI file, and move notes up and down. Whereas if you want to change the pitch in an audio file, you've got to use something like Auto-Tune which doesn't do it perfectly. And if you want to change an instrument in an audio file, you need to re-record the entire thing with a new instrument. But so when something is a MIDI controller, it's less expensive because somebody has to sit down and come up with all the presets in a synth guitar, and those people need to get paid. But nobody had to come up with all of the sound presets for the Alesis Vortex, we can cut those people out of the supply chain. They don't need to get paid anymore. They didn't do any work for us. MIDI also sends other information in addition to pitch bend, modulation, volume. Uh, it can send time data and make sure that all of your instruments stay in sync with each other. MIDI is just a way that different musical instruments communicate with each other. It's an extremely efficient way. MIDI messages are not continuous. I press it and it says, oh hey, turn that G on, and then I unpress it and it says, oh hey, turn that G off. And if you change MIDI channels or something before you take your finger off the key, it doesn't send the turn that note off on the right channel, so it doesn't know to turn the note off. There's some quirks with MIDI. There is more to MIDI than just, you gotta plug a MIDI controller into something to make noise, but also Basically, how MIDI functions in terms of keytars is you gotta plug a MIDI keytar into something to make noise. It's so exciting that we have something that's universal. They just they just talk to each other. It's fantastic. 
So don't be afraid of getting a MIDI controller. Don't feel like you're missing out on something. Because once you get over the initial hurdle of setting up MIDI, you have so much more flexibility with it. If you have an instrument that's getting older, you can download new presets every year to make sure that it doesn't sound dated. If you wake up one morning and you go, I need all of my MIDI instruments to sound like ducks farting, you can probably go online and find a duck fart plugin. MIDI gives you so much more flexibility than an audio sound, especially a less expensive audio instrument. MIDI is cool. MIDI is awesome. MIDI is not scary. Uh, it's just a different way of instruments communicating. I totally didn't forget to say uh, like this video if you thought it was informative and leave a comment, but um, do that. I didn't forget to say that. It was totally in the video. The cat for some reason doesn't want to be in my room right now, so we're gonna have to use backup Keytar Kitty. <laughs>